Hi everybody. Um, <laughs> so I'm uh, I am doing uh, WPCLI. Um, I'm going to present WPCLI. Um, I'm hoping this will go this will go well because you know Sean's usually one who's who's presenting this this particular topic and uh, you know he's sitting in the front row with a, with, with his clipboard you know marking me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so a little about me. Um, I am, you know, Justin. I, uh, I'm a freelance developer for the most part. I teach as well. Um, I, teach word, I teach web design using WordPress at, Ser at Sheridan College. Um, I've been meddling with WordPress since 2007 um, when, when I was in IT, in, in IT where I had clients, I had, I had a bunch of servers that were hosting uh, websites, and I had a bunch of clients who would call me up and say, you know, there's this. We have this WordPress thing on our site, and it's not working. Fix it. So that's usually what I do, um, or change it, or mess with it, or something. Um, so that's me. Um, I have uh, just. We, Shanta and I have just launched Web Weapons, which is our our new uh, new business to uh, um, for WordPress stuff. So and teaching and education and speaking and. Uh, WordPress stuff and you know custom software. So that is me. I also build decks. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, we at last uh, the, my first talk ever at a WordCamp was uh, it was in Milwaukee, um, and uh, and we went down to Milwaukee and the day we we flew in that day and we went and the organizer who was there was going to host the entire like the speakers dinner at his place and but he needed a deck and he was he was about this far done when we got there and so we decided we were going to help him so that is me and shanta on the on the deck it's canadian built <laughs> <laughs> so what is wpcli so wpcli is a set of commands it's a, a uh, set of tools that you can run at the command line um, to do like a ton of stuff within WordPress. And it's kind of useful for anybody who's, who's, uh, who does a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of things with, their, uh, with WordPress. So things that you know, they can easily, that they could automate would make them faster and, and make it easier for them to, uh, to bring up a theme or bring up a, an actual site or bring up anything that uh, you know, requires a little more you know, clicking and downloading and messing around with it. Um, WPCLI can do it in very short steps. So the website's there. My slides I will put up on my, on my site when I'm done at some point today or possibly tomorrow, depending on you know, how, how active I am running around to other places. So I will, you, you are welcome to take a look in the, the references. Much of my slides are, um, uh, are very wordy. Um, I am a developer. I'm not a designer, so my slides are not pretty, as you can kind of tell. <laughs> so what's this command line thing? Um, WPCLI works off of uh, the Unix-like command line. It's uh, uh, pretty much everything has a command line. All the different operating systems th these days has some kind of command line. Uh, Windows is somewhat sad when it comes to their command line, so you end up having to download another piece of software called uh, uh, called CYG Win to make it uh, make it look a little more friendly. Um, the Unix type command line lets you script really nicely. It is a it is a really it's really made for programmers, um, and it's made so that you can issue command by command by command and have it do one thing at a time. So you're pl you're in the case of WPCLI, you go to the, the command line and you execute a command to download the, the program. You execute another command to configure it, and so forth. So uh, remember MS-DOS? It's like that, only better, you know, on, on steroids, as one might say. So, uh, in, uh, so how do you get to the command line? On a Mac, you just open the terminal. So uh, you you can do a search for the terminal, the Windows button with a space. On Linux, the terminal, same, pretty much the same thing. Um, much, of, much of what I do, I, I host stuff um, on Linux uh, type systems. So my, 
my method of getting to the command line is SSH. Um, so SSH is just a uh, is a remote terminal, basically. It's a we make a connection to the remote site, and uh, uh, and I get a, a a a terminal through through the through the internet through a secure system. Um, on Windows, it's slightly more complicated. As I said, CYG Win um, is is a download that you have to you have to pull down in order to uh, in order to make a, essentially a Unix type uh, type command line. So uh, CYG Win, you go, it's free. You download it. You choose which packages are available. So you pick up uh, pick up things like wget and uh, or uh, curl or other things you choose to install, you install uh, PHP, make sure you have PHP when you do CYG win. Um, otherwise, it won't work. So uh, WP, you know, CLI doesn't work without PHP. And uh, the other way, the other th possibility to get to your command line is it's on your host already. So if you have like something like SiteGrounds, um, if you have something uh, many providers will provide SSH. Uh, the exception to that is that they may if they are shared hosting, they may not. They may choose to think it's a security risk to give out SSH access to their to their individual customers. So it may be on your host. It may not be. If you if you don't have it on your host, you should totally get it. Totally. Um, and then you can play with the command line. So uh, WPCLI is available at WPCLI.org. Um, you'll need PHP to, to download it. So on the Mac, um, if I believe the Mac has it, um, the on the on the PC, if you do CYG Win, it's uh, it, you you want to make sure that that package gets installed when you install it. Um, and if you're using an existing WordPress to if you're configuring something on an existing WordPress, it needs to be 352 or later. So uh, uh, <coughs> if you're uh, if you're configuring an existing one, this is also a great installation tool. So you, you know, we'll just download and install a brand new one in a second. Um, if you have a host, a lot of the hosts already have it. So uh, th things like Bluehost, Dreamhost, Synthesis, and SiteGround. Um, we use SiteGround, and it is uh, it does have it. Useful, useful things. I am not affiliated with any of these, um, so you know, I. Just put them up. There's probably a million more that I could, you know, have 27 slides full of names um, that have it. So, you know, try it out. To ask your ask your host, to ask your provider if they have uh, have uh, WPCLI. Usually, if they don't have SSH, they will not uh, they will not give you access to the WPCLI. <laughs> All right. So, installation. So you might already have it if you're on, on your system. Uh, it, it might already be on your system. Let's see if I can get So, wow, that changed my side. Where did everything go here? OK. So if you do WP minus info, whoa, that's not what I wanted. Sorry, I should not be running as root. Uh, so just wp dash dash info will give you something like this. It'll be an indication of what is on your system as far as PHP goes and whether WPCLI is there. Uh, if it runs, it it will it means it's there. If it doesn't run, it will say something like that, command not found. Um, so if you've got a command not found, it's really simple uh, to, oh, sorry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump back and forth a little bit. But uh, so there's two, wa two ways you can pull it down, uh, curl and wget. They're both, uh, both methods to pull out. Uh, um, that looks really microscopic. I hope it, nobody can actually see that, I'm sure. Um, but. Uh, Depending on what's on your system, you may have curl. You may not have the actual command line curl. Um, that's why I say, like, if you're getting CYG win, you want to you want to install that package, um, or wget. In this context, they'll do the same thing. Curl does more. It's much more fun. So, that's the command. It is it is simple. It's up on their website as well. So what it's doing is it's just uh, downloading a 
uh, a PHP file straight from their website. And that's pretty much Sorry, I'm. I thought I had this in perfect position for uh, uh, to do this. So there's my command. When I execute it, it downloads that file. As such, what you get is a wpcli.phar uh, a far file, an archive basically um, uh, of of it. This is this is executable. So after once that uh, that comes down, we can just we'll add the executable tribute to it. And you can actually run it straight out of here. So if you don't have access to, uh, to, to put it somewhere else, you can actually run it from wherever you want it to run from. So I'm just going to do dot slash wpcli dot r. And it gives me you know, the details. Or if I do it with a minus minus info like I did before, I will get the de same details I got before. <coughs> Simple, right? Any questions? It's like. That is like, you know, simple, mostly, kind of, right? All right, so my, I have another command at the very bottom here. If you can't, you've probably, you know, micros my microscopic commands on my screen, they actually were bigger when I was putting this together, um, was the, the move command. So if you want to put it into your, into your bin uh, so that it runs, so you can run it from the command line without doing this dot slash or trying to put in path names and stuff like that. Um, that's that's the command for it. I already have it on my system, so I'm not going to do that. But um, that's it. So, is it working? Well, we just sort of showed it was working. WP uh, space minus minus info. Um, so these these w, the WP commands. Anything that's a, uh, any any of the WP commands that actually operate on the WordPress will operate from any of the subdirectories within WordPress. So it will actually go back directories until it finds a config.php file to figure out whether you have a WordPress install. And then it will use that, that to configure itself uh, for, to, to set itself up uh, for whatever you need to do with it. So, so now what? What do we do now? So WP's got a simple, very simple structure. It's a command. Uh, you, you enter WP with a space, a command, another space, a subcommand and then the parameters for that, for that, uh, that command. Um, they're basically all pretty much the same, so, the same format in that, in that respect. Um, the parameters, there can be several of them, um, and they will come as either just the parameter name, like minus minus parameter name, or minus minus parameter name equals a value, a, a property value of that, of that particular parameter. Um, if you just type WP on its own, it will it will show you as I did before. Um, it will just show you the man page for that, or depending on your system, um, it will show you show you all of the different things that you can do with it. I'm going to touch a few of these, but you know you can uh, you can go through these on your own and figure out because they are there are a lot of really cool stuff that I am not. Uh, I'm probably gonna I'm probably not going to be able to go go through. So, let's see. So, what about creating a new site? Um, so the normal way to create a site, or at least the way that um, if you're doing it the manual way, you go to wordpress.org, you download a zip file or a, a gzip file or whatever, um, and you, uplo you upload it to your, your web space, you extract it to your web space, uh, to whatever directory you're using in it. Um, if, you're, if, you, if you happen to be lucky and have one of the hosts that just does this for you, well, then you, know, you don't need this, I guess. But you know, it's good to know. Um, so you download it, you extract it, you send it, to your, uh, you send it to your web space. Then you have to go and configure it uh, to, to your database. 
you have to, uh, and then you then you need to configure. Then you go to the web interface. You configure all the the the, uh, the items on your web on the web interface, the site name and that sort of thing, and uh, uh, the the URL and such. Instead of doing it all that way, three commands. Really simple. Now, I created a database earlier before I started this, but if I do wp core download. Whoops, what did I just do? No. I do WP core download, and it says downloading, uh, downloading WordPress 4.3.1. Um, this basically goes out to the site, to the WordPress.org site, downloads it for you, and extracts it. So now I have all these files in, the, in, my, uh, in my folder here with all, like, basically my WordPress setup. So if I roll over to my WordPress here, I have basically the very starting point of, of everything. Um, so let's say I don't want to actually do it through the web interface. Say I'm doing 43 of these installs. Um, we, have, we, have, uh, we have a server at, our, at the college, at our college, that, uh, has, uh, that we, give to our, we give some uh, WordPress install to our students. Um, some of them are sitting here, so, and they will know this. Um, it's called Phoenix, our server, and uh, and it is generally we send we send it to we send to our admin. We say, hey, um, we want you know 50, 50 accounts uh, for our students, and our admin probably and I don't know exactly what his process is, but let's say you wanted to create 50, 50 accounts on this. It is so super easy to or fifty uh, uh, fifty WordPress installs. It's super easy to to create a script one by one. Uh, Set names, run run it against, uh, create a folder, create and download, um, set it up. So, if my next command I'm going to use is wp core config, and my core config requires a couple of parameters. Um, so the database name and the database user, at the very least. Um, this particular server that I'm using, I have a virtual machine running on my computer at the moment. Um, this server actually needs a password, a password as well, so that's what I'm going to put in. Um, my ever so complicated password. So now that I've done that, I've hit the con I've done the config for my, my database. So if I go back to my site here, I'm now, I'm now at the page that is asking me for information. So the site title and stuff. So I could continue along here. This is actually where, where our, our admin leaves it for our students is at this, at this point. Um, so he will basically do use those two commands <coughs> over and over and over again to generate multiple WordPress installs. But let's say we, don't want to, we, we still want to do our third command here. Um, is wp uh, core install. Whoops. Uh, whoops. So this time I'm going to tell it I want. It's asking me for a whole bunch of stuff. This time I'm going to ask. I'm going to tell it just to prompt me for that information. Um, so minus minus prompt off of the end of uh, wp, the wp command. Um, will it mo in most cases will prompt you for the information that it needs to needs to run. So in this case, my URL is this one. Um, my site title. We're going to call it. Uh, my Tardis. The username's admin, which I should not be using, but I'm going to use it anyway. I, I, will, get, I will get scolded from my co-instructor about using the admin user, but this is my little, this is my little sandbox here, so I can do, I can do whatever I want. <laughs> and again, with the uh, complicated passwords. And there it is. So, and that's it. So if I go back to the site here, site's there. 
So the site's basically up and running at this point. Um, I use three commands. Now, if I wanted to, if I wanted to forego the, the, uh, the prompting, and I could, I could load this into a, into, into a script where I do three commands to, to do that. I, I, uh, I start with the core, the core download. Um, core download, core config, and then core install. And then the colon, core install would be minus minus URL equals, minus minus title equals, minus minus admin user, and so forth. So very easy. So if, you're, if, you're, uh, if you do a lot of uh, WordPress uh, for clients and such, or say you have development boxes or other such things, perhaps you build a script that will, that will install this for you in, in the exact way that you, you would do, uh, you'd start every one of your clients with. So maybe you bring, in, uh, you bring in WordPress, you bring in specific plugins that are always on every one of them, like WordFence or uh, other things. So let's, uh, let's move on um, to plugins. So simple, simple commands for uh, plugins. So here's my, I'm going to log into my site here. So if you notice, I have uh, I have several updates. I have a update that needs to be done on this uh, on this. It is a plugin update. It's a plugin update for a Kismet. Um, so I'm going to just I'm instead of actually you know clicking through this and potentially maybe you're you're admitting a whole bunch of sites and you just want to you just want to run this really quickly um, rather than going into the way, the interface for everyone, you can script out a uh, an update all the updates automatically. So I am going to just do and basically we're updated. No more updates required. So if you have 10, 10 different things, you have uh, um, you'd have 10 different sites. You run run it a bunch of time, a bunch of uh, very easy, very quick. So the way I did that, WP plugin update minus minus all. So I've just basically said, um, do all the updates on all the plugins. Will it, will it affect stuff that's not in the repository? No. So you can just set that up as a regular script update as I run through and do your maintenance? Yeah, Throw a, create a cron job that just uh, does it. The only the only worrisome thing about, about just automatically updating things is you, you know, if something explodes horribly, uh, during an update, if you're not actually watching it, it happens at three in the morning, and all of a sudden the site's down, and nobody notices it until whenever. I, I, that was sorry. That's from my IT background. I have, I had a, I had a business that um, we did that frequently. It was Windows Update at you know three in the morning, and uh, we'd come in, in the morning, and there'd be like five of our servers, of our client servers, were were offline, and we'd be like rolling our eyes at, at Microsoft and how, you know, crappy their update system is. Um, it has actually gotten better, oddly enough. Uh, Microsoft has finally figured out what their problem is. But, you know, sorry, I'm at, uh, that, that's a tangent often too, you know. <laughs> so uh, let's say we want, uh, say, we, say we're, you know, as my, uh, my previous, um, uh, previous thing was like perhaps you automatically want a certain certain set of uh, plugins to just installed on every one of your your systems and we're scripting out something like that. Um, so if we want to if we want to figure out, we start with WP plugin search. So and if I search for example Jetpack. Well, Jetpack's a whole bunch of, there's a whole bunch of things for Jetpack. Um, whoops. It's just, I'm just going to hit up plugins here. So I don't have Jetpack on this system quite yet. But, you know, Jetpack's a good thing to have. WordFence, perhaps, uh, depending on what you want. Um, so I'm just going to install Jetpack. So And it's installed. Ta-da! Um, 
The alternate the other way uh, also, what you can do is you can choose minus minus activate off the end of it. And not only does it install, it activates as well. So Jetpack's already installed in this case, but now it's active. Hooray. So we can just sit there and like you can literally execute this command multiple times with uh, your list, or you could have a script running, uh, a script that you, you just upload and to your, to your site, run the script, and you know, boom, you're, 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 uh, you're good to go for all your, your setup is all done. Think of, think of how fast that would be if you had like 10 plugins that you needed to install on every single time you do a WordPress install, and you just, you're just like boom, 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 one after the other. So, make sense so far? Yeah. It's awesome so far? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, on occasion, um, you ever have the white, that white screen of death, that awful thing that, you know, one of your plugins explode your WordPress? Um, instead of doing, doing things with your, uh, with your directories in order to get rid of your plugins, you can just run, there's a simple command, plugin deactivate all. So, so I can say deactivate, and if I if I were to put in something like Jetpack, I would Jetpack would now be deactivated, right? But if I wanted to do an all, I could just instead of doing Jetpack, I just do all. So everything was non-active at that point. That was um, kind of a sad demo, but. <laughs> So, oh, maybe I'll just say, I'm going to activate everything. There we go. Look, <laughs> it's successful. I've got three activations. So, <laughs> same difference, same idea, right? The kids met and stuff. All righty. So. Um, so, what about your WordPress database? What can we do with that? Well, there's all kinds of things that we can do with our WordPress database here. Um, there's a whole bunch of things that you can do with it. Uh, I have export and import on my list of, list of things. So, if we're just doing a WP um, DB export, and I have exported my test.sql. So, <coughs> There it is. There's the contents of my database, exactly as if it were uh, all ready to be put somewhere else or just used as a backup or whatever. Same thing going the opposite direction. We can do uh, WPDB import, and I'll bring it back in. So site still works, right? So basically, I just you know copied my site to itself, which you know is kind of useless, but you get the idea, right? So last thing is WPDB CLI. Just as soon as you say that, it just opens up the uh, it opens up your MySQL uh, console, and uh, it opens it as the user that your WordPress is in, and as as the database that your WordPress is using. So if you want to get in here, you can you know. Right, doing whatever you need to do within this uh, if you want to execute some uh, commands or whatever. So far, so good. So far, so awesome. Wow, it's uh, hmm. Okay, <laughs> this is seemingly I'm going a little slower than I thought I was going to be going in this uh, in this. So I will try and uh, try and talk faster and move a little quicker, but uh, we'll see. So. Uh, let's perhaps perhaps let's we're we're going to with the uh, uh, we'll go with a possibility that you're you're building a, a new theme right so let's say you wanted to generate a bunch of posts for that theme you want to you're you're building your theme and you just need some content to put in in your site so wp post generate uh, with a count of twenty that will generate twenty twenty new posts so if I go back to my site here. Back to the TARDIS. I now have post 21, post 13, post 14, post 15, and so forth. 
all my posts have, uh, have been posted, but there's no content, which is no fun. So instead of, uh, instead of doing that, we're going to do it with my own text. So I'm going to do the same thing. Um, and if I do, oops, if I do minus minus post underscore content, it's going to actually ask from the, co the command line. Try, it's going to wait for me to, to give it some input. And that may not be necessarily really the greatest method, because then you're, you're typing things. Um, and you have, you know, it, whatever you type in here is going to be made into 20 posts. But why would you want to type when you can automate this, right? So I just created a bunch of posts that with, with that stuff in it. But let's say you wanted to put something like, the doctor, the doctor who's uh, the doctor who Ipsum into it. Now, I actually, I actually pulled this off the site. Apparently, I can't pull it. I can't just pull it straight from the site because their site doesn't support it. Um, but instead, I'm going to just uh, put in my. I'm just going to pipe my cat. I'm just going to cat the file that I have earlier into that, and. I should get my Ipsum. Right. So I just created a whole lot of posts on here, all with a whole bunch of stuff. Um, Ipsums. There's, if, if everybody's ever looking for content, you know, you get the lorem Ipsum um, stuff, but you know, there's so much more. There's like the Doctor Who Ipsum and the Bacon Ipsum and the, uh, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, cupcake Ipsum. <laughs> Ipsum, Ipsums, lots of Ipsums. So, easy, right? Um, so, for perhaps, uh, perhaps we're, we want to uh, move on to uh, like perhaps we're building a we're building a theme. We want to we want to start with a, a underscores theme. So I'm going to scaffold out a theme. Um, so WP scaffold actually does a whole bunch of different things, but uh, in this case. I just created a theme based on underscores uh, called Time Lady. Um, I don't know who, who knows that reference. Um, so if I, go back, if I go back and I go into my themes here, there's my Time Lady theme. So yes. Yeah, that wasn't specifically about you. No, <laughs> don't worry, I'm not that big. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now I just activated that uh, that item, and uh, if I go back, there's my basic my basic theme with all my posts and everything. It's all scaffolded and ready for me to go, for, for it to go. So uh, same thing with child themes. You can, you can do single command, bring up a, create a child at the starting of a child theme. So I'm going to take this one. I'm going to oops. Oh, no. No leading splashes. So it created my two, the two files that I need. Um, and with just the basic setup that, I'd, that I want to, want to start with. Speedy saves, saves creating files, create, like uploading, figuring out how to get everything uploaded, and so forth. So far, so good. So th same thing with the custom post types. If I were to take, a, if I were to create a custom post type on, oops, so let's go. Ah, I'm going to scaffold out a custom post type here. So, it one command does. I am doing Sonic drivers as my custom post types. Um, and if I take ah. 
now. My memory is not as good as it uh, seemingly used to be. So now that I put that in there, I can reload my page here, and all of a sudden I have my custom host type with my Sonic drivers. So if I wanted to put a Sonic screwdriver in there, I can, you know, post my post types. All right, so themes are just like, it's just like plugins. So you can do a search. So instead of plugin search, you do theme search, and it does it pretty much exactly the same thing. So if I search for you know, WP theme search term, whatever your term happens to be, you can, uh, it will, it will find, uh, find items. Same thing with the install. So if I wanted to create a, if I wanted to install a theme from, uh, from that. So maybe, maybe you build off of uh, the same theme every time. You can just download, you can, as part of your, your startup script for something, just like install 10 plugins, install your, your theme, create a child theme off the theme you just downloaded. And you're good to go. Like you're ready. You're up and running right away. So, let's say we want to put, create a bunch of users in our, in our system. Similar to before, we're uh, going to be WP user generate uh, with account parameter on it, and we're going to create a hundred users. Easy, right? Now, that just seems like a security risk, but. <laughs> um, 100, 100 random users that you know you create, but and uh, if you wanted to make all of those, you know, you want to make it even more of a security risk. <laughs> <coughs> Whoops. Yeah, what not to do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, nobody has nobody has access to this this uh, this site, so you know. Don't have to worry about uh, somebody hacking in here. So, and there they are, nice and easy, right? Um, the same thing goes. There's uh, an add additional things where you can add in uh, CSV file imports. Uh, use your you create users based on CSV files. So if you have a CSV file with a list of users on it, um, you can uh, uh, it'll it will create those users with all the parameters in them. The format is uh, available online if you want to try it. Much of this stuff is, is exploration, so you end up like playing around with it and digging into it. So if I go WP users, user, it will tell me all about what the user command will actually do. And this will work for every one of the commands I've gone through, um, where I can say, I want to delete a user, I want to generate I, what the one I just did, I want to get the user information. There's an import, uh, import CSV. So Pull in the CSV. I give it a, a, a file name, and send, I could send an email with that when I bring them in. So I have 100 users. I import. It, I have them in a CSV file. I generate it in Excel. I load it up on my server. I just do the import, and uh, off we go. Um, emails out all the all the users, and you're good. So. Um, so in addition to just the stuff that is actually in WP CLI, there are, there's additional things. Um, so WP CLI will, you can, they have add-ons to that. You can, so if you're creating a plugin, so for example, you have a plugin that does backups. Well, maybe you want some commands within your, within your, uh, your plugin that does, that you can actually run from WP CLI that will, uh, that will, uh, that will, allow you to, to sort of automate some of your backup process or some of your, your other, such other things. And there's quite a few community uh, commands out there um, already. So the website is here. Um, basically, Backup Buddy has, has commands, um, backup, uh, you know, the blog, the, the, the just like, you know, I will leave it to everybody else to go through these and actually take a look at uh, what's available. But these are, you know, you install the plugin and it comes with these within your within your site. So I installed a plugin, or I created a plugin. Um, 
and uh, I created a plugin um, because uh, I have I have I created a dragon. I I built my I built my plugin to that I can say WP dragon, and I can say hello to my dragon, <laughs> and my dragon will say rar. That was really simple. That was like the very small collection of code that um, uh, to do that, um, and it's all documented on their on the site. Um, although I didn't name my file very well, but this is the file essentially. It is a single class with the operating instructions. Um, in the comments, so what, it, what it, the, the uh, command it takes, and then a function to do whatever, uh, whatever you want, to, want it to do at that time. So anything, anything you can do in PHP, you can make a command in WPCLI to do it. So that's it. Um, whoops. So. As I say, and my students will know this, I say to them at the end of all my classes, go forth and code. Um, and that's, I will say to all of you the same thing, go forth and code, um, play with, with WPCLI. Um, my details are here. Um, my slides will go up on my site, so justinhow.com, um, whenever I can get them up, so in the, you know, short, shortly. Um, and that's pretty much the end of it. Thank you. Are there any questions or anything at this point? Yes. So WPCLI has its own plugins as opposed to WordPress plugins? No, they're the same. They're the same. Well, they are. They you you do them through the same plugin infrastructure. So it, you create if you have a plugin that you put into your WordPress install. So the one that I was using, I have a WordPress install um, called you know WP off of the site that I was my test site here. Um, Right, uh, not what I wanted. So if I go into my plugins on this site, you'll see I have my my WC my CLI command. So anything you can download from the plugin repository potentially could have a WP CLI command available within that plugin. And WP CLI just figures out, you know, as part of its uh, startup, what where they are. Yes. Yeah. That's an interesting question. Possibly, you want to answer that, or shall I go there, there hunting? There's no command for regenerating all your thumbnails in the command line. I don't know if they've added actually deleting the media. You can do a media dash dash help. If you click through the uh, available plugins, I know this one generate images. I don't know if it works. Okay, the regenerate thumbnails. Yeah. So, yeah, take a look and and see. Yep. Yes. If you're running like a streaming plugin, like a graphics plugin for some time, could you can you execute the zip from the command line? Can I which? Execute the zip file from the command line. Uh, possibly. <laughs> I've not actually tried to do that before, but. Uh, um. Oops. The yeah, the answer is maybe. <laughs> no, this is like yeah. Yep. So there it is. You put a zip in there, and it's uh, you put a URL in there. You can pull it down as well. What was that? Was that a plugin get? Uh, WP theme install, oh, okay. or a plug WP plugin install. Um, instead, of, instead of putting the name at the slug of the, the theme, you, you put in a zip or a URL. Yes.
Yeah, I think there's a, there's a whole collection of plugins and stuff that you can do that with. No, <laughs> get out. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, it does uh, remote uh, management as well. Awesome. Hmm. Well, I, I kind of forgot. Just wait for the people in the back hanging outside. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I expanded your local server. Pardon me? Uh, that screen was uh, your local server? This is, uh, I have a virtual machine running on my, on my computer, so um, I have, I actually use uh, Parallels, um, and I... So, so you don't need the, the FTP server to install or update the plugin or something? Nope. Oh. Any other questions? <coughs> yes. Uh, it would be if it gets put on the repository, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Is that, that's just. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I can't speak to specifically that. I don't, I, I don't, I haven't used that myself. So, um, but, you know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much for...